Okay, so a little bit of like story of like how I got here. I'll make it super short because like nobody gives a shit, but like, you know, just so people know. Uh, so I started as a growth marketer, as you guys know. So for me, it was natural to see from the, uh, to look out from that, from the um, eye of a marketer everything everything i consume i see it from the eye of a marketer so if i'm seeing social media posts if i'm seeing advertising on tv i'm always analyzing like beyond and as we go through this conversation um you're going to see why that is useful uh and and why you should maybe try to uh if it's of interest to you why it would be interesting to also uh apply that into your everyday life so uh after a, a being a growth marketer i found webflow i fell in love with it and obviously always i love to design that's always been a passion of me but my execution uh, wasn't great because it wasn't something that I took in school and was like uh, my main focus. So I always knew about design, but it wasn't my execution wasn't like A plus. But I had that eye. I had that eye for design. So in my head, my struggle all the time was like, how can I be this sort of like person that knows a bunch of things but like doesn't know one thing a hundred percent. And as I started evolving in Eureka and like building my team, uh, I found out that I, I'm really good at directing projects creatively and artistically. Now, the creative director is more of like, um, like the global person that it's just overlooking the whole creative of the project. So making sure that the, 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 whole, the, the main message and the, and the main creative idea is always at the center of the project, while the art director is focusing on also the execution of the project, making sure that the web designers, the graphic designers are following a good composition, a good layout, the colors, and all of these things. So um, I found myself in that situation without even realizing that I was like falling into that uh, path of art direction. And now that I've been practicing and practicing for a few years now, um, I absolutely love it. Um, so I wanna show you guys my process to take a very basic brand, what I go through, uh, what I see, what I look out for, and then what the end uh, result is. So um, I'm going to share my screen. And the first thing I want to show you is um, what the end product is and how we can get there. Uh, let it load for a sec. OK. Uh, if you have any questions, just uh, maybe drop them in the chat or you can raise your hand and and we can go from there. So, so this is what the end product is. Um, obviously, I did a little concept for you guys. Obviously, don't like look into it too much because I literally did this in like three, two hours. Uh, so I just wanted to like have something to show you guys how I got here. Um, so obviously, it's a beauty or a skincare brand uh for uh women obviously uh but obviously if men want to use it go go for it uh but yeah i just wanted to take like or wanted to do like the role play of just getting a client coming to us saying like hey this is what we're offering what you know build a brand for us and then the the the, the process afterwards so let's say that we get a client with a very basic brief. Um, the name of the brand is Base, and they call themselves the best skincare brand in the world. What is it? It's a skincare brand for empowered women tired of using products that damage, damage their skin. They're also tired of products that don't come from natural ingredients. So my, my first thought and now this is coming back from that comment that I made, looking at this from the marketing standpoint. What I'm seeing here is 
the first word that pops up is empowered woman. So we already know that these are women that are not going to settle for something that it's just uh, typical. And they're probably buying already from products uh, or brands that are either socially active or have some type of alternate um, service or uh, philosophy behind them. The other thing that stands out to me is uh, they're tired of products that damage their skin. So these are women that are probably already aware of what's going on in the environment, how toxins are in our skin, how food affects our skin and all that, that stuff. So that's important to keep in mind. And they're also tired of the uh, not having natural ingredients. So that already tells me that they're not using products that have fishy ingredients in their labels. So those are probably L'Oreal, Neutrogena, like no hate to them, but it's probably those are the products that they don't want to be associated with. So the next thing that we want to see is the buyer persona. So who are the people that are buying these products? So women in between the ages of 25 to 45 who look and feel good. So, okay, marketing standpoint, I'm already picturing a woman that likes to shop a little bit. She cares about how she looks, but she's not like too, too crazy about, about uh, looking like a Barbie. Why? Because my marketing background already told me that these are women that buy from brands that care about nature, about animals. And usually the, the demographic of women that look like Barbies don't really give a shit about that. So if we, put, we start eliminating personas and we start creating this, this uh, buyer that, that we want to sell to, we, we, we can start shaping it with, with those uh, relationships that we can do from the experiences that we had in the past. Um, if I'm being too confusing, just let me know because, um, you know, sometimes I'm like too much in my head and, and I go too far. Um, okay. So they are not the most strict, but they do care about wellness. So right there and there, it also tells me that they are not the people buying, uh, what's the name of the brand that it's with it, with the bees? I bumblebee or something like that that it's like yellow and white i think you guys know what i'm talking about but birds bees. um birds Bubble. bees yes yeah. exactly yeah so they're not that person so we know that they're not like too like hippie-ish they're just sort of like in the middle um they are aware of trends so that tells me that they're probably in social media seeing what trends are happening what people are using but they're not like too 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 crazy about it they believe in the ingredients displayed by the company on the product so that is also important there's people that say no but it doesn't really matter what it says on the label well these people do care so it's going to be important for us to display that on our product um, they're married, their income is around 70,000 a year. Okay. So that's important because that means that we can, we, we can't really go too crazy on the, on the price. Now, obviously these are think thoughts that I'm having as the product standpoint as well. Like if we're also creating a strategy for them to sell the product, but in this case, we're only talking about art direction. <clears throat> Um, they buy organic when it's possible and they follow a morning and nighttime skincare routine. Um, then we go into benchmark. So usually after when, when we get a client with, with a brief, um, for brand design, branding, um, usually they come with a study, like a research behind um, and this benchmark usually gives us the results from that uh, uh, research. Uh, what they do is that they usually sit on a focus group with the demographic that they want they, that their buyer is, and they start asking them questions. What do you buy? Why do you buy it? How does it make you feel? Why does it make you feel like that way? And it's more like a psychological thing. So let's say that we got that re those results and we know that the benchmark is that they buy from uh, brands like Glossier, The Ordinary, and Benefit. 
So if we group all of these three brands, we can see that the denominator here is that they're um, indie brands. They're not big name brands. So that is actually confirming our assumptions of everything we came up with here. Now, the value proposition of this product is that it's natural, it's organic, it's not animal tested, and it's anti-allergic. So we know that there's good products in it. Uh, the client says, okay, we want to communicate empowerment. We want to show that we're organic. We also want to show that we're a calm brand with a hint of boldness. So right there, there's a curveball because we have uh, empowerment. So that's sort of like in your face. Then we have organic and calmness. So that's kind of like low. And then it throws that bold, boldness. So if we don't have anything to go from there, how can we dissect that information to get to something? Um, and then the project requirements are brand design and website. So what I would do in the next step, and obviously I'm not going to do this as granularly because we only have a few minutes, an hour or whatever. Uh, but what I would do here is I would just start literally highlighting the words that are popping up to me. So empower, damage their skin, uh, natural ingredients. Uh, follows a skincare night and uh, night uh, morning and nighttime skincare routine. Um, their interest in wellness, I would take that out. Um, I would take out all of these words. I would take out obviously what the client wants, and then I would start looking for synonyms that could represent those words and can help me shape my brand. So let's go into the mood board. So the first thing that I do in this situation is I start with a brand sensory mood board. So the brand sensory mood board is just random images that are representing those keywords that I came up with. So we know that we have calmness. We know that we have naturals. So we want to find images that are not specifically for a website or for a poster or anything like that. So natural ingredients, minerals, um, we have, you know, the, the, the colors, the, the texture of the liquid. How is that going to feel like? How is that person going to feel like spraying those products or applying those products to their skin? What, what type of um, smells are going to be there? What type of uh, colors are going to be there? And how would that empowered woman feel after using the product, the base product, which is called? And that will give, give us an idea of what all of the story and all of the, 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 pro, the, um, the uh, material that we show this client, um, how will that feel? How would that feel to us, to the user that's going to be uh, seeing it? And then we go into the brand visual mood board. So this is when, obviously, if they're asking for a website, I start going into a research of what are the websites that really sort of give me that same vibe of all of those words that we just went through, empowerment, calmness, boldness. So obviously, you guys are super, um, you already know this process. We all do it. Uh, but obviously, this is something that I wanted to show because I've seen that many times, yeah, we drop in the mood boards, but we really are not seeing beyond the full uh, composition that, that we have in front of us. So something that I, that I like to do when I get mood boards is just really dialing in into each design and seeing what are the things that are calling my attention. So for example, in this design, I really, the lines, like the lines are just super, super thin. So I make a note on my head, like, okay, maybe we can incorporate that into the design. In this one, I really love that the simplicity of it, how they're displaying the products. It's just very, very calm, calming. If we go into this one, we see that, that I feel like this is just a little bit more bold. Maybe it has a little bit of brutalism into it. 
I love how it doesn't really have like the edges, everything's connected to each other. And it has sort of like that mono typography that I really love. And they're mixing black and white with color photography. And that's basically what I do when I, when I save mood boards. I start looking at the buttons. How are they using the buttons? Look at, look at the, the um, uh, overlay of the typography here. Um, what can we see here that it's interesting? I love also the buttons here. I love that all of the images are following the same style. I love the, the, the typography on top of the, um, of the images. So, so just like little things, like even if you find icons, like the hamburger menu, how can I make that better and like reflect that on my design? How can I use texture and use it on my design? So, so yeah, so just basically going over every little thing and then sort of doing like a, like a, a new mood board that just encompasses all of those things that stood up for me. And then once I'm done with that, I go into the brand identity. So this is after I've done all of that research, obviously this takes, I don't know, it could take up to four weeks of studies and studies and, and testing different styles and seeing different inspiration and showing the client. Then we go into the client and we present the, the brand identity. So obviously we go with a more, um, simplistic typography for the for the logo something that it's just super straight forward nothing like uh too complicated with ligatures no we want to keep this very simple and straight to the point and then we go into the brand so remember i told you that i usually look for synonyms or use um maybe the same words and then show the client how i would show that um representation visually so we go into about the brand this brand is going to communicate wellness effectiveness and empowerment so those are my three pillars that i'm going to base all of my create my creative uh designs around and then the brand style is going to be bold cool dynamic modern witty and approachable now, why is this so important? Because not only for the for the web designers, the 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 people that are going to be actually designing the brand, why is why is this important for them? Not only but for wait, not only for them, but for so the social media team, for example. Because when they're creating a campaign, when they're actually writing captions for social media they have to refer to this style so they can communicate like how the brand would be talking to this type of people because we know that these girls are sort of like in the middle they're not the barbie they're not the hippie they're aware of trends so they're in social media they know the slang so they're kind of like this sort of like this cool girl that's sort of like they're looking at what's going on and they just really want to trust its brand that it that just reflects who they are so after that we go into concept so from the all of the inspiration that we saw on the mood board usually what i do is i start getting colors that reflect what i want to design for either social media or their website or their posters or whatever and i start just dropping different colors and adjusting them um, so i can create a palette that just flows for that specific brand and i feel like keeping them sort of like cool and some and some warm tones with a little bit of combination with cold tones um, could be a, a good a good combination for, for this brand Obviously, we're all in the Pangram Pangram um, train. So I chose PP Mori and Elberica New for the body. And then the concept style is going to be modern, cool, fresh, and bold. And once we get that approved from the client, we go into um, the concept. So let's walk a little bit through the concept so i can show you an idea of or show you a little bit of insight of of what what i was thinking when i was designing this so obviously the curveball was empowered and bold 
how can we as a like directing a, a, a team of designers how can you convey those two words and i feel for me the easiest way to do that is looking at typography colors and um layout so if you start playing with with typography you can really create composition that it's striking with movement with animation motion so as soon as these this loads the words are moving from one side to the other and we're seeing the the images flip on top of the other um right there and there you get that feel like okay this is striking this is capturing my attention even though for us designers we see this animation all the time but this girl who's sitting at her house looking at her phone on TikTok, seeing this for her, this, this is something that could be striking to her. So always look at how typography can help you emulate a feeling because it's, it would be very easy for me to say, you know what, I'm just going to add one line of text. And right then and there, this becomes from bold to minimal. But if we use typography to support that feeling that we want to convey, we have it right there. So it's always sort of like that play that, that we can do. So then we go into the hero. So we wanted to add a little bit of playfulness um, with the hamburger menu. We wanted to add the logo just straight and center and a button from an inspiration that we saw on the mood board. And obviously, they're going to be introducing a new line. And I went to ChatGPT and told it, give me a skincare product that is for bad bitches that want to like feel empowered and bold. And it came up with Skin Slay. <laughs> so um, we're introducing the brand new line Skin, Skin Slay by Base. Um, and we're adding the little play on typography. So, so that's where also we can add a little bit of this, of the thin touch. How can we combine something that it's super straightforward and sort of masculine and straight and minimal with a little bit of the feminine touch. And I, I've been using this a lot, obviously, um, and combining sans serif with serif. It's like something that I love. I'm always checking okay, what, are, what is my composition here? I want to have a lot of balance, but I also want to convey that message of, of coolness. Because remember, we're trying to convey coolness and boldness. Um, so I'm playing around with how we're going to display this text. So a cool way to do that is using the align this alignment feature. If we want to keep it, you know, more simple, then we can use the, the regular ones, either left, right, or center. But this will give us sort of like that magazine feel that could resonate with this type of girls. Um, I wanna like stop there for a second. I don't know what's happening. Like, is everybody cool with this or? Yeah, everyone's just amazed by the, the design that you came up with just a few hours, as you said. This is looking mm. fantastic. Okay, yay. Anybody has any questions? No. Yes, sorry. Can uh can't remember what's the name of the font you said? I know you said Pangram Pangram. But this is PP Mori. The other so one? This, was one this one is PP Mori and this one is ITC Garamond. Great. So, okay, so, so this is actually cool to, to, to talk about. So if text, and let's take it out from here. Um, skin slay, and we remove the ITC Garamond. This is like, as uh, from the eye of the art director, you kind of have to think, okay, how can I make this more interesting? So let's say we have the two words. Um, and let's say that we go into um, ITC Garamond. So right away, you kind of have to think of like, 
keep playing, keep, keep experimenting with it until you kind of feel like it's giving you that, okay, this feels right. So we know that, okay, yeah, slay, cool. Yeah, it does look a little bit different, but there's, it's just off. Like the, the dimensions are not the same. I, I, it annoys me that the top is not falling on top of this one. So I don't know. There's just something there. Okay, so why don't we try? Okay, yeah, I like the slanted version, the, the italics, but there's just something there. Okay, why don't we try like this? Oh, okay, yeah, cool. Why don't we try maybe like this? Does that make sense? Mm, in my eye, it doesn't make sense because now I see this and then I see this curve. So I want that little bit of... Um, I kind of have to do this because um, so I kind of want that that sort of like same line on the top here and same line on the top here but it's still not there's just something not falling how I like it so okay let's play with it let's play with it until we can we can make it feel good and I use a lot the rulers so I can see where the top is falling and where the bottom is falling. And that's how I start playing with typography to see how, how it can sort of like just click together. And, and I do that with everything. So I do that with this top. I do that with this bottom. Um, the image, for example, like the image, as soon as I drop it, it could be there, but like, it's really not just giving me anything. So, okay. How can we make this image more interesting? Like, can we add the eye? Like, is that something that would be more interesting and striking when you're looking at the, at the design, you know what I mean? Um, so, so it's just playing around. Um, and, and the way I see it is always balance so even though i like to play with things being sort of editorial and brutalist and things like that i'm always looking at balance how can i balance things so in my eyes i see okay i have these three things in the top they're encased by this nav bar then we have this in the middle and then we have this in the bottom can this be here yeah it could be there i actually love that could it be maybe here and maybe this moves here, you know, and then also, um, you know, uh, uh, always making sure that that's um, aligned. Um, I love that. Like, look how different it looks already. Um, so, yeah, it's just like playing um and deciding what is what what feels better and and how you can even take it further so it doesn't really look like the same thing all the time yeah and i want to about something about the image like you selected because you like there's there's a few elements that compose the design right there's color there's typography and there's also balance like you said like balance things out but I also think that the assets you use, the images you select, they can make or break a design. And on this example, like it's a perfect example of like choosing carefully your image, and the image like takes the, the whole composition to the next level because like the image is good, high quality, like it zoom in into the skin, and at the same time you have the eye on one of the corners at the top, and you have this uh, the, the skincare product uh, on the face on the opposite corner at the bottom. And the way that these two elements are, the main headline is right in the middle, kind of like everything is encapsulates the headline in the middle. And I think that this whole composition with image, that's what makes the, the this top section kind of stand out and look perfect. It's perfect. To exactly. Me. Yeah, it's sort of like the rule of, of thirds of, from photography. When you're taking a, a photo, you want to make sure that the, that the focus is either on the bottom, in the center, or on the top, I think. So, so also, it's just trying to find that balance in the pictures that you're using. And um, if you feel, for example, there's a picture that could work, 
um, fit it in the frame the best way you can. Like start playing with it because, um, you know, like I could, I could have maybe said, let me just, uh, what am I doing? Okay. I could just say uh, this, but it just doesn't make any sense. Uh, maybe we make it bigger and like, don't even show the, the picture, you know, the, the eye. So, so yeah, it's always trying to like play with the, with the image and adjust it to the, to the frame accordingly. So then we go into the next section. So obviously I didn't use the correct uh, logos. I used this from a client. So, but I wanted to give that social proof or not that social proof, but proof that this product is the real deal. Um, obviously as you're directing a project, you're also working with UX designers or the web designer already has experience on UX. So you know exactly where to add uh, the, the, the blocks of content, but for usually for this examples, um, or for this exercise where after the brand identity is supplied to the, to the client, what I do is I provide a concept, which is sort of like a website, a homepage, but it's really not a, a homepage. It's just like a combination of components that I want to show the client, um, that they work together so we can expand on them on the actual homepage and the other pages. Um, okay, so then we go into um, selling the product. So we found this beautiful images. Um, the products are super captivating. They're following that calmness, but if you see, there's a lot of movement. There's a lot of boldness behind that. This just simple cream full composition of the images makes it bold. And we start playing with uh, the cards. So how can we make the cards, the composition of the cards interesting? Uh, we can start playing with, you know, uh, hierarchy. How can we make this the 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 title of the cream more prominent prominent and then this would be secondary how can we make this one a hover effect without it overpowering powering the whole design uh we're also seeing like the heading how can we incorporate that italics into the sans serif how can we show um uh highlight of all of the benefits that this uh client or buyers are going to see uh and be able to obtain from this brand and then how can we even take the cards even further how does the hover effect look maybe it starts here and then it goes into this or maybe the hover effects is is this uh from this so it's always like testing and seeing how can you take it a little bit further? How can you change? And if you see this, this is completely different from this and this and this. So it's just like playing around with different versions and seeing how you can expand. Maybe you can use this on the home page and then those cards in another page. And then we go into my favorite, my favorite screen. So remember that we said that this buyer really cares about the products that are inside of the cream. How can we take this section of the page and just take it one step further? So we know we had this beautiful imagery with the, with the liquid in the back. Okay, cool. So let's just take that imagery, cut it out. Obviously don't be for the Photoshop chop here. But, you know, I did it as fast as possible. <laughs> but the idea here is that you land on this beautiful section and right away the tube of cream is like rotating and moving and we see the, pul the pulsing dots and we hover over them and it tells us it has beautiful active vitamin C that it's going to make your skin absolutely gorgeous. And everything in the back is just moving and it's just this captivating um section that right away that buyer is going to be like shit this is legit i'm buying this i trust this 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 uh ingredients 
And then we go into that um, version of the buyer. Now, remember, I'm seeing it this as I'm, as I'm designing it. I'm also seeing it from the marketing standpoint. So how are we going to humanize this brand? So we know these girls are not the Barbie. We know they're not the hippie, but they're these girls that really care about the environment, about looking real and feeling beautiful. So this is their section. So this is where we're going to talk about them, how we created or this brand was created for them. Uh, it has 36 different shades. So it's inclusive. It cares about the environment. It cares about the people that buys it. And we can take this section and even expand it more. Um, if you see the flow of the of the page, we know that we started with a full screen image. We go into the three cards. We jump into the beautiful animation. So right then and there, that's like a lot. So I want to break it there and just bring it back to like more more of like a like a simple uh, layout that everybody knows the three steps but in the, in the vertical uh, version. And going back into the content, this is where the brand can start specifying who this, this product is for, what are the different shades maybe, and why is it done for this type of people. And then we go again into the full screen image and we talk about the founders and why they're so relatable to the people that are buying the product. And we tell a little bit of the story of who they are. And then we end with a beautiful, impactful, bold um, footer. And that's basically my process to um, sort of overview of how I create a brand. My process from A to the end. Um, obviously this is an overview, but just to give you an idea of like, if this is something that you like, um, it's just such a pleasure to like dissect what the client brings and how you can even make it better. And if it's something that relates to you personally, for me, skincare, obviously everybody knows I love this type of stuff. So, you know, it's such a pleasure to do this type of things. So, yes. <laughs> Do you guys like it? Yeah, it's beautiful. Perfect. Spot on on, on all the, the brand guidelines you, you, you and all the keywords you highlighted on the, the beginning of the process. It's clean. It's bold. It's like you, great usage of imagery. You also design with movement in mind with that section with the product rotating. That's yes, fantastic. Yeah, it's fantastic. I, I like I, I said in the comments that Melissa, you're so ready to join the next uh, Re Relume Design League uh, edition. <gasps> I would love to see you there. You will oh, nail it. Oh my there. God. Yeah. <laughs> that would be so petrifying. Oh my God. I don't know if I could take it. Yeah, I mean, you should do it. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it, guys, because I really enjoyed I actually, um, this wasn't planned at all. And we kind of had to like m do this like last minute. And I just love doing this so much that I stayed until like one in the morning, just like tinkering with it and playing around. And and I just love it. And, and I wish we can have more conversations about this and bring people that are really, really good to see how they do it. Uh, because it's just so, so, so awesome. I love it. Me too. Uh, well, I have two questions. Uh, first yes. one. Uh, the first question is like, you mentioned you look into other inspirations, but the ones you showed mostly were uh, websites. Do you take inspiration from somewhere else? And my second question is, this one probably is going to be a little bit in depth because um, I think I told uh, Mar Marce as well, and I spoke to other people about the idea of our direction. Um, oh, with Pierre as well, we talked about it. Like when do, like for example, a lot of people in the industry uh, that say they have a kind of like a sense of, of our direction means you need to go into junior, senior, designer, blah, blah, blah. You need to 
go into all these steps to get there. Uh, so what is your point of view on that, right? On our direction? Do you need all this or is it, I don't know, something you're born with sort of in the sense of like knowing how to direct uh, a piece of art, a piece of website or, you know, uh, something like that. Does okay, that make let sense? me ask, the two questions? ask that. Yeah, let me, it, so what was the first question again? The first question is, where else do you take inspiration from? Because you showed a lot okay. of websites. So do you take it from somewhere else or just websites? Yeah, so I think actually the two questions go hand in hand. And the reason is because I don't take only inspiration from websites. But when I'm, like, I remember when I was first starting, I would add inspiration from everything, like architecture, fashion, and I would drop them in my mood board. The problem with that is that it wasn't, it was just not helping my brain make sense of what I wanted to put in paper. So it was evoking the feelings that I wanted this brand to um, evoke on other people, but it wasn't really uh, laser focusing my brain into the formats that I needed to design. So now what I do is that if I'm going to design packaging, I'm going to find inspiration on packaging and drop it in the mood board. If I'm going to design web, uh, a website, then I'm going to drop inspiration from websites. Uh, just so I can keep myself uh, focused on the format that I'm going to be delivering. Now, in my everyday life, I constantly consume inspiration. So I'm all the time looking at my surroundings. My house is super important to me. So, you know, everything I'm looking at, I'm looking at the shape on that vase. I'm looking at how the light is hitting. I'm looking at how something moves. Like if I see a commercial and I see a splash, okay, how did that splash? Like, how can I e emulate that? So now answering your second question, I think that to direct a project as an art director, it's not like you just have to go through all of this process. It's just that because you've gone through all of those processes, you're able to direct it. You know what I mean? Because you do need an eye for design. I do think that there's just people that are born with an eye for design, but I also think that you can train it. And for someone that needs to train it, maybe that's the person that needs to go through absolutely all of the steps. But if you are born with an eye for design, I think that you already kind of have like a, uh, how do you say that, like a step forward? And, um, what you would need to focus on, which is what happened to me, is in your execution, which are things that I still work on. Uh, so for example, like spacing is so important. Uh, size is so important. Balance, colorways, um, margins, like all of those things is what makes a composition. And if you don't understand those things to the T, you will notice it in the design. Because um, I can show you like, and this is obviously something that I've, that I've worked with Joseph a lot that he has trained me because th they were things that I didn't see. Like if you see all of, my headings you can see that they all have the same spaces in between um you can see that this space is meant to be like that you can see that this space is the same as this space like those minimal things are so freaking important because it what it's what makes your design um like uh, makes sense in a way. So like if we take this and we place it on the middle, we already know there's nothing there. It's not going to affect it. But let's say that we are going to drop 
a rectangle. Sorry, guys. Sorry, I'm like doing this with my nose. I'm so sorry. So we already know that this is in the middle, but like this top is not the same as this this uh, side. So like those are things that that you have to look like. How can you make the same space in all of the all of the sides of your square? How can you make this balance? So if we're gonna drop another rectangle here, how are we gonna make that rectangle look good? Like you have to drop it here, one, two, one, two. We already know that all of the sides are the same. So if we're gonna drop another one here, okay, we're gonna move it to the side, one. And then if we want to add another one, how are we going to make it the same one? Okay, perfect. We have the same space, but you see how like now this space on the top and on the sides is bigger than the ones on the side. Okay, perfect. So now let's make it the same. You know what I mean? Like right there, you can see that there's harmony, but when we have this like that, this may be like that, it just doesn't flow with the eye. That's why it's so important to understand those things, the basics. Yes, makes a lot of sense. Uh, you mentioned composition uh, in photography. And for example, I have literally no uh, um, uh, studies or any education on graphic design. So basically, when I design, I do it because I, I used to be a photographer. So I do it in that sense, like, okay, I should do a composition in terms or just even watching a movie, for example, you know, uh, depending on which director you're watching right but the composition for me is what it speaks the most and what i you know learned along the way basically by listening to all of you as well and maria for example is like uh the first like it's this the, the amount of for example sizes like for me i didn't even think about it for example they're like oh you should divide it by two i was like oh uh, you do that like <laughs> i guess <laughs> you know <laughs> Like, I didn't know you sh should divide it by two. Like, in my head, it was like, okay, I'm seeing it as a as a photography, let's say. So I'm trying to find balance between it. But when you implement this, for example, the idea of, like, the same sizes everywhere, like, it just changes everything. Like literally Exactly. Everything. Exactly. And, like, something that I've noticed people do... Um, one thing that I wanted to know, I think like you are the one of those people that have eye for design, like it just comes natural to you. So it's easier for you to maybe get to the point of art direction because you already have that eye, you already understand. So now it's just polishing and understanding those basics. And like when you get to that point where you understand the basics, now your designs are just going to be so even so much even more harmo harmonious because you're following the rules of graphic design. Mm 